And he knew her not until she had brought forth her firstborn son. And Joseph called his name Jesus. In the book of Luke, we have a little bit more uh, exploration of his name. The angel said to the shepherds, Fear not, for unto you is born this day in the city of David. And we know it's Jesus, a Savior, which is, this is his title, it's not his last name, which is Christ the Lord. So Jesus is the Christ, the Anointed One, the Messiah, the one that all of the prophets looked forward to. Now, I have here um, kind of a demonstration item. It's called a what? A candy cane. So we even have some of them, perhaps. We're going to make sure everybody has one today. In fact, if, if I can, can I get the ushers to come forward at this time? So we'll make sure everybody gets one. Let you hold on to that today. The candy cane is a well-known Christian symbol. Now some of you may say, well, I didn't know it was a Christian symbol. Let me tell you, I've heard several stories. I've heard several stories about the history and the meaning of the candy cane. Perhaps you've heard some of them too. I, I've even heard this. By show of hands, how many of you have heard this? I've even heard that it was made first by a candy maker, and he was looking for a way to communicate the gospel. And so the candy maker uh, made the candy cane to be a witness. Anybody ever heard that before? You know, some of you may have, some of you may not. But the candy maker made this candy, this confection, to be a witness. There are all kinds of symbols to be found in this little piece of candy. So, so it goes. Um, it's uh, shaped uh, like the letter J. You see? You can even write that down on your outline. You hold it like this, and it looks like the letter J. And its purpose is to remind you of Jesus. And if you turn it this way, if you, if you turn it this way, it's a shepherd's crook. And there's a few things you can think about there. Because first, Jesus is the shepherd. Like the Bible says in Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. And I think I have a spot for you to lie. Maybe more important than knowing he's the shepherd is to realize that that makes us the what? We're his sheep. We ought to be his sheep. We should be. We could be. If we would trust him and accept him as our Lord and Savior. And so in that we've got the we've got the J and we've got the shepherd's crook. And that Jesus uh, came, the candy cane is primarily white. White as snow. To represent purity. Uh, to be a sacrifice for our sins. Because he is the spotless, you might write that down. He is the spotless <coughs> Lamb of God. He is the spotless Lamb of God. To be the sacrifice for our sins. And the red stripes represent his blood. More clearly, he was beaten stripes. He was beaten by a whip. And he was nailed to a cross. And the Bible says by his stripes, we are healed. And the hard candy, and it is hard, is a symbol of Jesus is the rock. And when I sang as a teenager, and he rolls my blues away. So stripes of red for his blood, and he's hard. He's solid. He's not taffy. He's not bubblegum. He's, he's not oatmeal. He's hard. He's strong. He's dependable. And finally, the candy cane, I, I like this the best. The idea is the candy cane can be broken. In fact, it ought to be broken. Many times we preserve it, but originally the idea was it was purpose to be broken. Broken and shared. Not hogged. But broken and shared. That was the original thinking. At least that was the idea. I recently heard, though. Now listen, I recently heard that all of that is not true. I recently heard that the candy cane doesn't really mean those things. And that it was actually not made originally to be a Christian symbol. And so I looked that up. See, I'd heard that. So he said, yeah, but I'd heard all those things. And so I, I just accepted it. But I heard recently also that no, 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 that the candy maker didn't make it. He didn't do it for all those reasons. Actually, what I discovered is there was a great deal of uncertainty. That 
actually, there's a little bit of, uh, of unknown about the candy cane's origin and original meaning. But that didn't bother me a bit. You know, right? What did I tell you about my pumpkin? I don't care what the pumpkin was for in 1522 at my house. He's happy because he loves Jesus. Or he looks bad. He's a scary pumpkin because he's mad at the devil. You, you as a believer should do what I do. We take everything and direct it to God. Because we know that it was supposed to be for God. So when I heard those things, it didn't bother me. It, it didn't bother me one bit. To be accurate, I, I don't know if those things, I don't know if all those things I said were purposed by the original candy maker or not. But here's what I do know. I know that they're all true for me today. What I just told you is the absolute gospel truth because I just told you what the candy cane means to me, what the candy cane is purposed for to me. And so every time I see a candy cane, you know what I think of? I mean, somebody, somebody else might say, well, I ain't what it means. Well, that's fine, but I'll tell you what it means to me. I think it really is shaped like the letter J. And I think it really does look like a shepherd's crook. And I think that, um, you know, while I'm at it, I think if you break it right about here, if you break it right about there, to me, it looks like what? The letter C. So to me, I kind of think it looks like JC, Jesus Christ. So while I'm at it, I'm not going to stop with whatever I've heard. I'm going to keep going. To me, it looks like a C, and that stands for Christ. And as far as I'm concerned, that stands for what? Christmas. You're right. And the red really does remind me of the sacrifice, and the white really does remind me of his purity. And every time I see a candy cane, I know what it means to me. And I actually believe it is one of the very best symbols, the total package for Christ. I mean, it really is a total package uh, uh, for Jesus. That little candy represents the fullness of the gospel, right down to the hardness of the candy, reminding us that Jesus is the solid rock. And that best of all, when it's broken and it should be broken, it should be shared. Who, who better to share it with than someone you love? To give her the Christ. I'll take the J, you take the C. Why don't we do that? I've given you a candy cane. Why don't you do that? Why don't you break it? Why don't you share it? And when you do, say this candy cane, I share it with you because I love Jesus. Look, I, I know that Christmas is for long days away. It all depends on how you look at it. For some of you, it's coming too fast. I know. For some of you, you might have some little ones. What can we open that? Four days. That's what they're going to do. It's four days before the presents are opened. It's four days until the turkey is eaten. See if for four days you can remember what the candy cane means to me. And if you, if, if you can't remember that, what the candy cane means to me, then why don't you let it uh, be what it means to you? And that we would remember the same things. And that if you hold it this way, you know, I can't remember much. Preacher, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't, I'm not too smart. Well, then just remember this. Hold it like this and it looks like Jack. Right? Take your finger. Yeah, oops, backwards. <laughs> Look like a J to me. Look backwards to you. All right? That, that we would remember that. And when you break it, when you break it right here, it really does look like a C. Doesn't it? Doesn't it? Sure. See if you can remember that. Can you remember that? Forget all the other stuff. Just remember that. Because that's what I want to preach to. He'll, uh, she'll bring forth a son. In Matthew 1, 21, you'll call his name. You'll call his name what? Jesus. And the angel said to the shepherds, fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. And you'll bring born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is what? Christ. The Lord, if this candy cane isn't about Jesus, if it isn't about Jesus, I'll tell you what, it should be. It really should be. Because it's just not Christmas without Jesus. You know, Christmas can be celebrated in many ways. You can do it all kinds of ways. You can do it with gifts or without. You might be going to have a gift with Christmas. People do that. That's fine. You can do it. Still Christmas. You, 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 can, uh, you can do it on one day or another. we got to work at my house on the 25th. You can have Christmas on the 26th. I believe by definition you can still have Christmas. It's not bound to the 25th. 
Are we designated? Many people say that, but I actually believe that you can still have Christmas on the 26th or the 28th or the 32nd. No, I'm just kidding about that. <laughs> You've been eating too many candy canes. You can do it with family. Some of you this Christmas might be separated from family. You can still do Christmas without family. You can do it. You can do it without cards. You can do it without Christmas carols. You can do it with decorations. Or you can do it with that. I was, to the, I was teaching the youth Sunday school this morning. They talked about all the things that make them think of Christmas. All these things I'm talking about. And I shared with them. Actually, you can do Christmas without any of those things or with them. But the one thing you can't do Christmas without is without Christ. Without Christ, by definition, there's no Christmas. Think about it. We respond to things. We didn't say, hey, you know what? Let's shoot off some fireworks or wave, wave a flag because someday something's going to happen. What we do is we say, shoot off some fire flag, fireworks and wave a flag because something what? Happened the 4th of July. You knew what I was talking about, didn't you? We don't say, hey, let's go eat a turkey, wear some funny clothes, and be thankful to God for the country that we have because one day we're going to have something happen. But we do all that because something what? Happened in the past tense. Hey, we don't celebrate your birthday because one day you're going to be born. We celebrate your birthday because something what? Happened. You were born. So it goes. Hey, we don't have Christmas because we ought to put Christ in Christmas like it's an invention of ours. The only reason there ever was a Christmas was because what? Something happened. You got it. That's right. So I'm not going to put Christ in Christmas. I'm not mad at anybody. I'm saying something happened. The only question is, do you know or not? Do you know or not? A pastor asked a little girl at church. He said to the little girl, it was right after Christmas, and he said to her, he said, uh, did you get everything you wanted? For Christmas, did you get everything you wanted for Christmas? And she said, No, I didn't, Pastor, but it's not my birthday anyway. Well, she was wise beyond her years. We asked all these kids, we asked each other, Did you get what you wanted for Christmas? The question that really hangs, the question that we should be asking is, I wonder if Jesus got what he wanted for Christmas from me. I know he wants souls. Well, then get him one. Well, I was just meaning like he wants some and he got mine and I was hoping that you'd go get him one. Well, we're all that way. Give my wife Christmas gifts. Make my life easy. No, y'all don't do that. I know what I need to do. Hey, you know, let's get him some. I know what he wants for Christmas. Yeah, well, then give him that. Is he getting what he wants from you? What do you think God wants? He wants more missionaries. Well, then be one or support one. We celebrate Christmas at Glendale. I'll tell you why we do it. It's like birthday. We do it because we love Jesus. I love Jesus. I've loved him since I was a boy. Probably loved him more simply and truly. As we get older, we think about it. But I think about it. Hmm. Yeah, I love him. Love becomes as much a matter of the mind as it does the heart. And say, he's got my heart, but I do. I can, I will not flinch and say, I love Jesus. I pray I can live up to what I just said, that I would act like that. We celebrate Jesus because we love him. And if you're at Glendale Baptist Church, you need to know, and you're here because I'm here, we're here because we honor Jesus. We honor the name of Jesus. We want everybody to celebrate his birth. We want to teach our children about the baby from heaven that was born in a manger. And... <coughs> That baby from heaven. Jesus who? Jesus the Christ. Jesus the Christ. It's hard in my brain. Jesus the Christ. It looks backwards, but it's right in you, right? Good. That's, that's what I'm preaching about today. That, that's, that's it. The JC. Forget all the other stuff you wrote on your outline. JC. Jesus is a saving man. Jesus is a saving man. Why, what's the big deal about the J? Why, why, why is that name so special? Jesus is a saving name. John chapter 20 and verse 31. Jesus did many other miracles. Many other miracles which are not recorded. But they are written. These are written that you believe that Jesus is the Christ. The Son of God. And that believing you might have life 
through his name. So Jesus' name is a, is a saving name. That we would have life through what? Through what? His name. His name. Jesus' name is a saving name. The name Jesus means, literally, you can write that down, God saves. That's what it means. Ken means handsome. Ken means handsome. Jesus, way better than that, it means what? God saves. I'm glad my parents didn't name me that. Because I'm not God and I don't save. But if they had, I'd, I'd want to try to live up to it. If you do get that name, no sin in that, well, then you've got a big name to live up to. Jesus is the only way for us to get to God. Jesus is the only name that you and I or any other person can be saved by. Who was the first person ever saved by the name of Jesus? Well, we don't know for a fact. We don't know for a literal fact. Who was the first person saved by the name of Jesus? But I have a suggestion. A strong one, in fact. I would suggest that the first person saved by the name of Jesus was his earthly father, Joseph. I know he gets hidden and pushed to the side and many, many a Christmas boy wears his dad's oversized bathrobe, doesn't have any speaking lines, but he ought to. He ought to. He ought to have a speaking line. You see, the angel said to Joseph, what? Call his name Jesus. Call his name. Come on. Call his name Jesus. And told him that he ought to take Mary as his wife. And he did that. And he didn't have to. Joseph could have resisted God. I know he could have because guess what? I've done it. Would you be brave enough to aim in that? Have you ever resisted what God wanted you to do? Or just tried not to listen, therefore you don't get knocked? He didn't say, I, if I'd have known, but I tried hard. I got so busy watching television, I couldn't have heard anything God said. You know, I didn't resist, but I just ignored. But Joseph didn't ignore, and he didn't resist. Um, he didn't have to name that baby Jesus any more than he had to take Mary as his wife. But Joseph did take Mary as his wife, and he did name that baby. In fact, the name is twice. When I read Matthew chapter 1 to you a few moments ago, you've got the first one and the second one, but you may not have really picked up on the second one. In verse 25, Joseph knew Mary not. He did not lay with her or have any relation with her until she had brought forth her firstborn son. And Joseph, that's the he. Joseph did what? He called that baby's name what? So Joseph has a speaking part at Christmas. Have you ever heard Joseph speak in a Christmas play? I never have. But he should. He says one thing and one thing alone in the Bible. I know one thing that Joseph says in the Bible. What's the one thing? If you were known, he only said one word in his entire life that we know of. What's his word? That's the only thing we ever know that he said. Joseph looked at his son. He knew the meaning of the name. He knew what he'd been asked to do. He didn't have to do it. He knew that it meant God's names. He knew that his son was God's means of salvation by that name. All this was not random. He could have said, this is too crazy for me. He could have said, I think he was with some other man. I don't believe any of it. But I believe that he accepted his son as God's salvation. That means he accepted when he said, I'll do all of this and name the kid Jesus. He was really saying, I recognize this baby is God's salvation. He could have named him Joseph Jr. But he didn't. When he accepted Jesus as Jesus, as his salvation, I'm sure that he did, uh, for, did it because Joseph not only claimed Jesus for his son when he gave him that name, knowing what the name meant, he claimed Jesus as his salvation. I named this child God saves. And so at that moment, and this gets really good, Joseph, I think, is the first to be saved by the name of Jesus, but he is the first witness for Jesus. Isn't that something that his father, the child in the play in the bathrobe that's too big, was the first great missionary for Christ? 
He's the first one that announced to the world his name is Jesus. Joseph is the one that did that. Joseph was the first one to tell the world the name of Jesus. The angels told a lot to the shepherds. The angels told a lot to Mary. The angels told a lot. God revealed a lot. But God revealed something to Joseph. He revealed to Joseph the name. And Joseph stood in the gap. Do I tell it or not? Do he, does he Joseph Jr. or not? Is he God saves or not? Is he my salvation? Do I recognize him? If I name the kid this, people, you know, this is worse than Johnny Cash, a boy named Sue. If I tell my religious Jewish society that this is God's salvation, do I do it? I do it. Because I believe it. And I proclaim it. And I want us to see that. I want us to recognize Jesus is a saving name. He proclaimed, Joseph did, that my son, get it? Good. The name of Jesus is a saving name, and I'll tell you what, Jesus is the best name. You heard me a minute ago say, I'm glad my mom didn't name me Jesus, but if you name your child Jesus, wow, you've got a lot to live up to. Because Jesus is a good name. It's a saving name. It's a good name. The candy cane reminds us. Jesus, Philippians chapter 2, it's the best name of all. It's the best name. You know, I like my name. You like your name in the youth group today. I was doing their Sunday school. A couple of them said they didn't really like their names. I like my name. But I never dare tell you that it's the best name. The best name is Jesus. Philippians 2, 9. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name. That in the name of every knee should bow in heaven and on earth. Now let me be clear. Jesus lived up to that name. I said if you gave me the name Jesus, I have a lot to live up to and I will fall short. But Jesus didn't fall short. He lived up to the name that he was given. If he didn't live up to his name, then the name wouldn't mean anything. You see, by the time Philippians is written, it is a declared fact of God that this name is above every name because Christ, my son, has lived up to it. He did live a perfect life. He did die on the cross for sins he didn't commit. He died for your sins, not his sins. He did lie in a tomb for three days. And he did on the third day rise up from the grave. Up from the grave he arose. He did do that. With a mighty triumph or his foes, he arose a victor or the dark domain, and now he lives forever with his saints to what? To reign. He did do all that. Jesus is honored around the world. The Muslim may not accept Jesus as his God and his Savior, but I would have you to recognize, nonetheless, Muslims do recognize Christ as a good teacher and a prophet. So around the world, even by those who do not recognize him as God's salvation, they still recognize that the name is what? A good and righteous name. That is to make the point, I just make the point that Jesus is honored around the world. Hey, you know what? If somebody says something bad about Jesus, it's not going to be for anything wrong or evil that he ever did. It's going to be because of the people who represent him. When people talk bad about the J, it's going to be because of you and me. I mean, we can, we can say that. If some speak ill of Jesus, let's bear the responsibility for that. Let's accept that in some way we and other Christians have brought dishonor on the name of Jesus. You know, I, I, I do ask God to forgive me. For things that I've said or done to dishonor Jesus. To dishonor the name. If somebody speaks poorly of Christ, let the blame fall on you. If somebody says something bad about Jesus, say, then I accept responsibility for that. If we were to ask the world this question, the answer would always be the same. What did Jesus ever do to you? <coughs> What did Jesus ever do wrong? What did Jesus ever do to hurt you? 
The answer is always going to be the same. Well, nothing. So what is your problem with Jesus? When you get right down to it, the problem is going to probably end up this, and I'm not going to like it. Well, I guess my biggest problem with Jesus is you. So we have a name to live up to. Remember I said I didn't want my mama to name me Jesus? But whether I want it or not, we're called Christians. That is a diminutive. Christ guns, little Christs. We reflect him in the world at Christmas. Might we not be angry at the world who goes unrecognizing? Might we rather to show them that Jesus is a saving name? Jesus is a saving name. Jesus is the best name. And at Christmas, here it is, four days away, I know, but maybe you can remember this. Jesus is the name we need. Hey, much, uh, much of what we want, we don't really need. Anybody want to amen that? Much of what we want, we don't really need. And if we have Jesus, we actually have everything we need. In Acts chapter 3, a lame beggar begged Peter for money. Money representing all the stuff of the world that you might need. And Peter said to him, he said in Acts chapter 3 and verse 6, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have I give thee in the name, there it is, of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him, the lame man, by the right hand, and he lifted him up. And immediately his feet, the lame man's feet and ankle bones received strength, and he, the lame man, leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple. He went into that temple and he was walking and leaping and praising God. That's just fun to say. That, that sounds like a Christmas gift. Everybody say walking oh. and leaping <laughs> and praising God. Praise All right. You may want a lot of things this Christmas. You may want very little. You may want for very little. But the one thing that we all need, the only thing that we really need is Jesus. In 100 years. 100 years. In 100 years, the only thing that's going to matter to any of us, in 100 years, the only thing that's going to matter to any of you is the name of Jesus. That's going to matter in 100 years. 100 years from now, that's going to matter. You may have been tuned out through this sermon. <coughs> Tune in now. The name of Jesus is going to matter in a hundred years to you. Look at what that name did for the lame man. It gave him a reason to celebrate far beyond anything that he thought that he wanted. What day was it for the lame man? What day was it for the lame man? Somebody said, well, how are we supposed to know? Is that one of them brain twisters? It was Thursday. I don't know, but it just said that he was lame. And he said, I want some gold. And Peter said, what day was it? I think I know. I think I know what day it was for the lame man. That day when they told him to rise in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I think I know for that man, that day was what? Christmas Day. That was Christmas Day for him. Like I said, you, you, you can move it. The only thing you can't do, it's non-negotiable. You can't remove Christ from it. Or it's no longer Christmas. It can be something else wonderful. It can be my birthday party. You can sing at my party. You can put a tree up at my party. You can give gifts at my party. You can have cake at my party. Turkey at my party. Sing a King Creek more carol at my party. You can do everything you want at my party. But what makes it Christmas? You can have poinsettias at my party. Candles at my party. You, but you, if you put Christ in it. Now you think, hey, this is my party. Now you turn it into his party. That's the non-negotiable. What does that do? It makes it Christmas. I'm glad you said amen when I said for that lame man it became Christmas Day. I didn't even have to tell you that. I heard those amens. It just came out. We got it. Jesus' name gave him, that man, the gift of his legs and a reason to rejoice. I want to tell you, I celebrate Christmas because God has done so much for me. So much for me. So many times and so many ways. Jesus has helped me. That was a time when I lost my entire family and God gave it back. Many of you have testimonies just as awe-inspiring and as amazing as mine. And in those testimonies, God plays a part. Hey, the candy cane, 
I, I suppose it can mean many things. Somebody go out there on Snopes and say, well, it doesn't mean all that. Some historian in 1542. Hey, I told you today what the candy cane means to me. What I think it ought to mean to us. Above all else, it ought to remind us of Jesus. And let's break it. Right about here. And let it remind us that he's the Christ. And then let's share it. Let's share it. Let's share it. If I could share a piece of candy, I could share Jesus. I could say, I go to Glendale Baptist Church. And there we talk about Jesus and God and how he loves us. Hey, where's the line to see Jesus? Where's the line to see Jesus? Why, it's here at our church. Let it be at the altar today. I ask for you in Jesus' name to be a member of our church. That you would join me. That you would become a part of it. December 21st, 2014. In Jesus' name. Accept Jesus as your Lord, as your Savior. If you've done that, then make this your church home. I'm going to ask you if you would to pray silently with me. God, I always feel so small, Heavenly Father, when I preach a Christmas message. Sometimes people say that I'm an okay or good preacher, but Lord, I realize that there are some that are far better than me. I thank you, God, for the gift of these fellow believers. I thank you, God, for the privilege of being able to preach to this congregation. Lord, there are a great many reasons that people celebrate Christmas. But Lord, we know Jesus is the reason for the season. Pray this prayer personally, right here, right now. You claim it. You echo in your mind. I know Jesus is the reason for the season. Just pray it with me. Jesus is the saving name. Jesus is the name I honor. Jesus is the name I need. I repent of my sins. I turn to Jesus. Save me, Jesus. Set me free from my addictions. Get addicted to Jesus. Give me peace. I will live for you, Jesus.
close us in prayer. Let me encourage you to check your Lottie Mae mailbox. It should be alphabetical by your last name. Maybe you'll even see somebody's name in there who's not here, and you can help us deliver the mail. You can help get their mail to them, help the other people out. Maybe you live by somebody in that box. You can take them their mail. Over by that, in front of the Lottie Mae mailbox, is the pictorial directory sign-up sheets for the first dates. I mean, at the end of January, and there'll be another set at the end of February. But just the first set, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday are there. Tonight, bring finger foods. And Brother Jody will sing a few carols in here, light a wreath. And I think you guys are even maybe going to sing a special for us tonight. So some good things going on here tonight. Please pray with me. Dear Lord, thank you for another day and the many blessings you give us, Lord. Just be with everybody that's not able to be here today, Lord, for the Davis family, the Jacksons, and other people in our church, Lord, that you know that, that are, aren't able to be here today, Lord. But also pray for the Oakland family, Lord. As we go about our day, Lord, there's always the military out there that we got to thank for everything that they do for us, Lord, and all the youth in the church, Lord, and everybody else that helps out and does things for us. And we just want to say... As we go about our day, keep us safe and out of harm's way and bring us back tonight, Lord. As we go and do everything else for somebody today, Lord, just pray, just pray and be there for God. And just pass the word on that, you know, we're here for you, Lord. We're doing the best that we can to pass your name. Down. Lord, we all sign up. want to say this in the precious name of Jesus. We love you and thank you. Amen.
to see Jesus. Hey, Griffin. Griffin. Did you see Mr. Ernie? Thank you.